Hey, everybody, this is Think Global, where the world is our home, where strangers become friends and friends become family. My name is Tim Davis, and I am joined here in the studio with Jonathan Smith. Hey, man, nice to see you again. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, we're both freshly off the uh, the old plane. We've just been back from Spain, had a conference there we were a part of. It was fantastic. It was actually. so much fun. It was yeah. really good. Good to see a lot of people that I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. And, and, you know, jet lag coming this way from Europe is is, is a breeze com oh, yeah. compared to Asia. So I'm feeling really good. Right. Yeah. Going east is always the hard hard thing. Going west is always more doable. Yeah. And uh, I know that you and your family spent a little time on vacay afterwards. So did Lynn and I, and that was really refreshing. So much needed. beautiful part of the world. Oh, anyway, yes. yeah. Spain, Portugal, if you've never been there, folks, and you have a chance, make sure you do that. All right. Uh, today, John, we are wrapping up uh, our final episode of a three-part series uh, that we've called A Better Version of Us, which is a big deal because we want to be who we should be, a better version of ourselves um, in this world that we call our home, especially as we, um, many of us are kind of global ambassadors. We're we're out there, uh, we're on the road, we live in different countries, and uh, it's a chance to be who we should be. So that's what we're talking about. So yeah. we've had two other ver uh, two other episodes, what were they on, and then we'll move into today's subject. Uh, we talked about uh, friendship yep. and, and how to be a better friend and be, as a better version of you, or a better version of us, how do we be a better friend? And we also talked about our work. Um, how do how are we a better version of ourselves in the workplace, and how do we view our work? Yeah. And and yeah, so those were two great episodes. If you missed them, uh, go check them out. Yep. And so I think the the last subject uh, of this three part series really is very fitting. It's about interruptions, and probably where we feel uh, the sting of interruptions most is in our work, and we talked about that last time, and also even in our friendships. Um, yeah. Because interruptions do play into that as well. And so today we just want to stop long enough to talk about interruptions, especially those who live globally. And many of you are our friends. And we know that interruptions can be a, almost a daily thing in their lives. Um, uh, crazy interruptions. I mean, like, you know, uh, traveling globally, you fly, find out water doesn't always work like it should. Right. There's not always hot water. And electricity goes out all the time. You talk about interruptions. I mean, there are a lot of interruptions. And then a whole day spent just going to the market for vegetables and your favorite vegetable lady who normally sells there is not there. I mean, right. so, and, and the list could go on just on that. So today we're talking about interruptions. We yeah. want to take a positive exactly. twist to interruptions. Yeah, it's a, uh, like you just mentioned, it's a daily part of life, whether it's yeah. in a work environment like we're in, you're at your desk, you're trying to get work done, people stop in and interrupt you, right? right. Yep. And, or in a global context, uh, you wake up, you're, you need to take a shower to get to your work or your class or your, the next thing you have to do, and you realize the water doesn't work. That's right. Or the electricity is out. Right. And that's an interruption. And so it's a part of daily life. But oddly enough, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it. I, right. I can't think of a podcast or a book or anything I've looked at where people talk about interruptions and how to navigate interruptions, right. especially in a positive light. And so right. we did do a little bit of research yes, we did. leading up to this. and. All the research out there that we found, and maybe our listeners are smarter than, than you and I, they probably can find probably other are. stuff. But yeah. but what we found was that the, that people talk about the impact of interruptions and, and how negative it is, but no one talks about how to use interruptions well and how right. to, and the positive side of them. Right. So we hope we take a little bit of, of a twist in that direction right. to be more positive. Yeah, and that's what we want. We yeah. want we want to be... Um, we want this conversation to help us understand, yeah, uh, interruptions are not always negative. Right. Uh, they can have a very positive benefit. And there are proverbs out there um, that help us with this. One proverb goes this way, many are the plans of a person's heart. Like we we put all these plans in place and these, these dreams that we have and the action points we want. But it says, it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Mm. And we can be thankful for that because sometimes our plans just are not the best plans. Uh, his plans prevail, and they sometimes come as a form of of an interruption. Right. Uh, for example, running into someone that seems like an interruption, but it was actually uh, a wonderful provision right. of of God for us to spend some time with somebody. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's one proverb. Another proverb goes like this: "In their hearts, human plan their course, but it is the Lord who establishes their steps." And again, 
sometimes the steps that have been ordained for us um, by a sovereign God uh, sometimes seems like interruptions, but right. they really are divine appointments. Right. Even in like seemingly sim- uh, silly examples of like, you know, I, I planned out my whole day, I've got my to-do list, and I'm going to have the most productive day ever. Well, yeah. all of a sudden, a conversation I wasn't planning on happened, and that took an hour of my day, and then somebody else stopped in for like a five-minute little chat, right. and then this, and then that, and then, oh, and then my wife texts in, and we got a thing at home, I got to leave the office early to go handle that. You know? Yes. All these things feel like interruptions, and you could look at it and say, oh, I didn't get my to-do list done. Right. But what if you were able to help that person that stopped in for a for a chat or or I was actually able to serve my wife in a certain way because she needed me in that moment. You can view those as a lot more important right. than just getting through my to-do right. list. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's do this, John. Let's yeah. you and me talk a little bit about uh, some interruptions that we've had. I'll begin, then you tell us a story, and I'll tell a story. I love it. Um, but how the kind of interruptions we're talking about, like yeah. how, how this actually works. All yeah. right, so on one occasion, and it just kind of reveals just a little bit about my uh, me, myself, <laughs> and uh, my my wife, and we're different in this in many ways. Um, but we went up to the mountains at a great time in the mountains together. Coming back down, a significant serious accident took place probably a quarter of a mile, half a mile ahead of us. And as you know, coming out of the mountains, sometimes you've got one road that lets you out or gives you access. And so we were stuck and it mm. was, it was a serious accident. So it was about an hour and a half, two hours. My natural response is like frustration. Like now I, I know human life was involved and, and I, I, I am sensitive to that, but the reality of sitting in a, in a line that long was beginning to frustrate me. And Lynn has always loved to say to me, um, and it's just a common saying out there, you know, when you get a lemon, make lemonade. And so her, she looked over at me and said, well, let's make lemonade. And like, <laughs> I, I couldn't see any way to make lemonade at that moment. <laughs> but, um, at the end of it, what we ended up doing was good. We just pulled off to the side of the road, uh, which, um, was very available and got out of our Jeep and walked down to the river and sat there and watched the river flowing through some rocks into the water and had a good time together. So, uh, it turned out to be a very valuable moment for us. It was good. It was a good lesson for me to learn that, yeah, even in the worst of circumstances, there's there's an opportunity to enjoy. So, um, for me, that yeah. was one example, and it, it is that attitude that says, yeah, interruption, but we can make this enjoyable. Yeah, you created an opportunity That's out right. of out That's of the interruption. Right. Yeah, and, you know, I have a story where actually I was the interrupter. Yeah. You know, it's not always about us being interrupted in our such important lives, but I was actually the interrupter and. Um, I have a friend and he's a longtime friend and in this particular season of life, I'm I'm fairly busy and he's busy. He's the CEO of a pretty large company. And so he just his days are just full. But we keep texting every now and then and saying, Oh, we should we should catch up sometime and I'm trying to think, well, I do want to catch up with him. How do I do that? Well, one day driving to the office, I just thought, I'm just gonna call him. I'm gonna interrupt him, whatever he's doing. Mm-hmm. And if he answers, he answers. And if he doesn't, it, it is okay, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I called. Well, he answered right away. And we ended up having about a 45-minute mm. conversation on my yeah. drive to the office. And then I sat outside the office for a few more minutes once I got here and finished uh, chatting with him. And it ended up being a really encouraging conversation for both of us. Yeah. We shared about what was going on in life. We shared about our families. We shared about work. And uh, he, you know, we shared book recommendations. And I mean, it was just a really life-giving conversation because I chose... Uh, to, to interrupt, to take that chance and interrupt and mm. see what might happen. And he took it, and actually he made a comment to me because I said, oh man, I didn't think that you would answer. Oh, I'm glad wow. you did. Yeah. And he said, well, I love this because my entire day is scheduled wow. down to the minute. Yeah. So something that's unscheduled from a friend, I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. So I, I thought that was cool. And that's a good perspective. Like there are those unplanned events that yeah. are just super cool and we need them actually. Yeah. That's actually what makes life pretty spicy and good to me. Yeah. Yeah. One other thought, you know, like, and this came to mind as we were preparing this, um, earlier. Um, and that is, uh, I, I know you were just in Portugal, you know yeah. how beautiful it is, mm-hmm. you know, how lovely the people are. And, um, and I love their outdoor cafes oh. that sit on the street under trees, you, you know, you, the, the night is alive and, uh, the temperatures are cool and, it was late in the evening and I had finished a long trip 
And what I wanted really was just downtime. You know, that's my psyche. I wanted a little bit of downtime, alone time. Went to a restaurant that was highly recommended. Put me at a table and I thought, this is great. You know, there was a crowded restaurant. And I had forgotten that in many of those cultures, if there's a seat open across from you, oh, they'll right. put another person there. Yeah. So sure enough, here they put another dude right there um, in front of me. And my first temptation was to put in... Um, my earbuds to maybe listen to a podcast or something. And instead, I decided, you know what, just be friendly at first. And so here I am in Portugal, in Lisbon. This guy is seated in front of me. Um, and with his wonderful accent, speaking English, we engaged in um, an amazing conversation. I didn't realize it, but he was a, a politician mm -hmm. from Porto. He was in town for uh, the business that he had to do. And I learned so much about Portugal, mm. so much about the culture, so much about their politics, uh, so much about their life that I couldn't have gotten that um, in a book. Right. It was, it was actually, it turned out to be one of those evenings where I was just thankful. Like, mm. God thanks that I had a chance, uh, even though it was against what I wanted, um, I had a chance to talk to this guy because he was so engaging, so friendly, so warm. It gave me a whole perspective about Portugal. That otherwise I would have missed. And yeah. so I, I remember that distinctly. It was just one of those great moments that I was willing to maybe accept, mm. but when I re rather would have listened to something on my own, but uh, something better was in store for me. It right. was a great interruption. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, it's kind of like that point that we keep talking about. Like life would be so boring without interruptions. Yeah. You, you would have had a nice, quaint meal. You would have enjoyed your food. Yeah. And, but, but if you look back on it, you're like, yeah. That was an inconsequential, unremarkable right. evening, but That's it became right. a remarkable evening because of right. that conversation. That's right. The interruption make it made it a, a very remarkable evening. Right. Yeah. And so which you, is cool. Yeah. You think about even in an office environment, like, okay, I sit at my desk eight hours a day and nobody ever interrupts me, but I get my work done. Right. But okay, that's fun for a day or two if you feel overwhelmed or ultra busy. Right. But after a couple of days, like you're bored. Yeah. So- Inviting the interruptions, being interruptible, actually brings a little spice to life. It like, right. makes that's, it that's interesting. Exactly right, and accepting of it, and, and our attitude going into it. But let's be honest, John. I mean, sometimes we can't be interrupted, or we need to focus. So what do Absolutely. we do? I, mean, you, I know you, you you're of that generation where you have a lot of thought into this. Give me some ideas, like because a lot of people are out there saying, "Yeah, right," but I got to work. Yeah, you do. yeah you do absolutely. So it's you have to balance life, right? And I think that's a lot of what we're talking about is. Balance. I know we talked a little bit about balance in the work podcast too. Like it's not just being a workaholic. I mean, right. same thing with being interruptible. If you just talk all day long, you don't actually yeah. get your work done. Or right. if you've got a, if you're a writer and you have to write a chapter of a book, but you're at a cafe and you get interrupted the whole time, you're never going to write the chapter of your book. So at, right. at some level, you got to get your work done. So if you truly don't want to be interrupted, I have two very practical things. Um, I would say put your phone on do not disturb. Yeah. A lot of our interruptions come through the screen. And we That's talked exactly on the right. previous podcast about screen time and that sort of thing. But um, but put it on do not disturb. That's a feature they build into the phone for a reason. So uh, people are like, oh, well, I might miss this or I might miss that. Well, fine. You're going to be interrupted. But if you truly don't need to be interrupted, use the do not disturb right. feature. Put your phone in a desk drawer. Do whatever. The other thing would be if you're in an office environment or at home, you work from home or whatever, get out of that environment. Um, Go to the library. Oh, well, it's quiet library. Well, you're going to get a lot done. You're going right. to be focused. That's you right. know, go to a coffee shop that's off your beaten path, off your regular routine. You know, I have my regular coffee shops I go to, but I know I often will run into people that I know at that coffee shop. Right. So there's plenty more. So I go find one that I don't know anybody. Um, little secret I, I did uh, a couple of years ago. I don't think I, I've done it since COVID started. So going back a couple of years, but um, I used to spend about one day a month at a co-working mm -hmm. space. And I think you're the only person who knows the name of that right. co-working space. That's right. I didn't tell anybody where I was going because I didn't want anybody to think like, oh, I'll do that too. Right. And then I see them there. Right. And now I've just invited interruption. Right. But I did it one day a month right. to allow myself a full day of, of focused intention around the projects or the things that I needed to get done. Right. So, and I, and while I was at that co-working space, my phone was on do not disturb. It was in my bag and I went in prepared with a list of things I needed to do, but I couldn't do that every day. Right. Back to, uh, interruptions, um, give a little spice to life. 
So I, I like it, but I can't, I can't do that every day. Right. No. So anyway, a couple of practical things. Right. All right. So I, as you were speaking, yeah. I was listening. I just went, I know you, but you know how our brains are. Like we, yeah. we think of things. I actually thought of something that might, I would love to think it's profound. I'm sure it but is. But maybe it's not. Anyway, <laughs> but here is my thought. Um, I think sometimes the greatest challenges are our self-induced interruptions, like looking at our phone. Yeah. And before we know it, we spend an hour on Instagram or Facebook or something else like that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now we're crunched for time. Right. And then all of a sudden, another interruption comes not by virtue of what we've done, but yeah. someone else who needs us. Right. And we don't have time for it. Right. Yeah, yeah. That so is that is good. It's uh, kind of profound, isn't it? Is it is profound. Like, because often what we do, we are the victims of our own interruptions. Yeah. And and that just comes with focus and intentionality, yeah. putting boundaries on our phone, on on Netflix or whatever, yeah. so that we have time for those divinely appointed interruptions that really matter. What, yeah. made, me th- what made me think about this a little bit is uh, you and I have a friend who just lost their father. Mm. And I, Lynn and I listened to the, the funeral service because we were overseas when it took place. And, and, and this was very true of this man. He always had time for interruptions that really mattered like that, right? Um, so it was, it was the lady who was single, a single mom who like a snowstorm hits and she can't shovel the drive on her own because it's a monster snowstorm. Yeah. And he always had time to go to take care of an interruption like that. Or a, uh, a single mom on the side of the road as he's driving past and stopping to help rescue her, basically, help her get her car to a, uh, to a place to get taken care of, providing a few dollars for a meal. And actually, when we have used boundaries well, we then have time for those interruptions that really do matter of consequential uh, nature that we yeah. that we really need to respond to. So I do think what you're saying is is good. We we need to set boundaries. We need to set time uh, constraints, and we need to focus on those things and stop doing some of the things that do kill our time, so that we have time for those divine appointments. So yes. we have time for those interruptions that really do matter yeah. in life. Yeah, I mean it could be a this could be a different podcast altogether. But I love the idea of like auditing your time. Yeah, like people rarely slow down enough to say, you know what, I'm going to do like an audit of how I spend my time. Yeah. And we talked about it on the other podcast about screen time and how it right. shows you your screen time or whatever, but that's one. Yeah. But how many hours a day do I watch Netflix? Right. Um, how many hours a day do I spend just looking at this or looking at that or talking about this or talking about that? Or even if you just did an audit of your day, you would find a ton of time in your day. But I like what you said about, I got a lot to do. But I spent an hour scrolling Instagram. Right. But then when somebody walked in to talk to me, now I feel interrupted. That's right. And now I feel frustrated at that person. Really, right. I should be frustrated at myself because I spent all my time yeah. interrupting myself. That's right. And But rather, we kind of cast that right. blame on other people right. when really blame ourselves. Right. Hey, hey, wouldn't it be a fun little exercise? I'm Again, that's something just kind of random here. But wouldn't it be a fun exercise to manage our time wisely... And then say, all right, now bring on the interruptions that right. really matter. So right. it's like we've used our time wisely. Go ahead, God, do something crazy. I'm ready for it because yeah. I got time for it. Yeah. I've made time. I've built time into my life for interruptions, right. which is kind of a cool thing. I, I think that's what we should do. And right. you know, I'll, I like the idea of that because it allowing interruptions in your life allows a chance to show that others matter more than ourselves. There you go. Like, I care about whatever your needs are because you came and stopped at my desk or you called me or you texted me, whatever, I get to show, I get to put others before myself. Right. And that's just a great principle of life. Put right. others before yourself. It brings out the best in us. Yeah. And if you don't allow interruptions, you're basically saying, I'm more important than you. Right. Leave me alone. Right. But if you actually structure your time, structure your life, structure your days where interruptions aren't actually interruptions, right. you can actually say like, oh, I value this person more than I value myself. That's, right. that's and, exactly right. And I don't know how about you, but a lot of times interruptions spark creativity. Yes. Sparks innovation. It sparks new ideas, whether for me or the person that interrupted me. It's not all about me. Like maybe my conversation with them helps them walk away and go, oh, that unlocked something for me. Right. Well, good. I'm glad I was able to do that. That's right. So actually, I I think what you're saying, to, to summarize what you're saying, I think, you know, planning for interruptions and taking the best attitude toward interruptions probably make us a better us. Yes. It actually, and that's what our whole series that's is about, what it's being about. a better version of who we are, um, where 
the way we look at life is interruptions, especially as it relates to other people, really are opportunities to be a better us. Yes. Anyway. That's a good way to summarize it. That's a good way to summarize it. Perfect. All right. And there is a quote, though. That yeah. You probably need to, we'll end on this because this is a great quote by someone that uh, we love the writings. We we appreciate the, the wisdom that comes with. Uh, yeah. You want me to read that? His, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So, uh, there's an author, his name's Henry Nowen. A lot of, a lot of you guys yeah. know Henry Nowen. But he says this, and we, Tim and I both thought this was really good. He says, I have always been complaining that my work was constantly interrupted. Then I realized that the interruptions were my work. Yeah. That's Great. perfect. It's a good way to summarize what we've been talking That's right. about. That's exactly what we're saying. We, we do complain a lot about the interruptions, but if we just saw that as a part of our life and being a better version of ourself, I think it takes us a long way into being the kind of people we need to be. I love it. All right, man. Here we are. All right. This was our May podcast of Think Global, where the world is our home, where strangers become friends and friends become family. So folks, let's uh, together make a pact. Let's work on this. Interruptions are not the enemy. They may be the invitation to a better us. And with that, we're signing off. That was good. Thank you, guys. <laughs>